Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk about TypeBot, which is a chatbot platform where you can actually build advanced chatbots. As you can see here on the platform, there is a hosted version, but there is also a GitHub version if you want to install it yourself. So of course the advantages of the hosted version is that you don't have to care about all the updates. And you can see there's a lot of you can do. You can implement videos, you can open AI integration is available, and you can do a lot of advanced stuff already. You can embed it to your WordPress site, to Shopify, all the integrations are available. You can export it to a Google Sheet, you can connect it with Zapier, and as you can see there's a lot of functionality down there. If you click here on the very end i'm sure we also find the github link here if you click on the github you will see that the type bot can be actually cloned to your own server and then you can use the server here they're quite active here on the github so it's a good bot to use what we have done is actually we put it on our own server and i want to show you some testing so you see what the type of bot can do and i would not recommend to use this kind of bot if you're doing more advanced stuff because there is better other platforms out there that you can use like for example voice flow or bot press but if you just trying to build a simple bot this can be enough for you what i want to show you today is just like a simple loop where you can actually implement your OpenAI key, you can implement even custom tuned OpenAI models. At the moment, they updated it. So you can actually have your fine tuned data also in the bot. So, all the visual bot builders, it starts that you can have your own canvas drawn out. So, you can actually drag and drop everything you need to the canvas and then connect it with these arrows here. This is the usual way to build a bot visually and you can go ahead and do that. I want to show you some test questions. So what I did here is actually I connected some questions. I connected OpenAI, the ChatGPT model. You will see we have to also go ahead and find a key. So I have to generate a new key and I will put that key into the system and it will work again. So I press play here and it's starting to ask me this question. Do you feel any lower back pain? I will say yes, but then you will see it's requiring a key. We get an error because we don't have access to the OpenAI account. This is an opportunity for me to show you actually how you can get your key. Just click here. And in the top here, it's saying select an account and we need to connect it. And I will just say here, test account. And here the key is required. We can click here and go to the location where we can find the key. And I will just create a new key. We'll just call it test. We'll create the key. We'll copy it out. I will go back to my type pot i will just copy the key here and that's all actually we need to do this is all we need to do now it's configured and i can make it bigger here i can see the models here the chat gpt 3.5 then we have the turbo whatever we want and we can pick the bots here it's also a question of the cost because if you pick the gpt4 for example here it, the cost I think is 25 times bigger at the moment. So I would recommend to use the ChatGPT 3.5 and you can fine tune that, but we are not talking about the fine tuning in this video. So the important thing is that you connect your API key, you go ahead and pick the model. Then in the message you can define, in this case, it's a bot for lower back pain. So it's a therapy bot. So I said, you are Eva, a therapist specialized in lower back pain, using expertise and mindfulness techniques, engaging in conversations naturally as positive, similar. So you see, you can define the background. 
you can define what the answer should be. So user question would be this and that. Response guidance. This is the response guidance from something that is more complicated. You can say to OpenAI, if the response is yes, it should jump to the yes feature, yes section. If the response is no, you can jump to the no section. So this is something that is more advanced already. Then you have to define the message sequence, and I will explain that to you in a second. So basically we defined two variables. One is the test question answer, one is test question reply. And then the last thing we need to do is to define test question reply. And in this bot, the reply is quite, it's not difficult to do, but in some other bot building platforms, it's just always the last answer of the user. So you don't have to define it all the time. But let's go ahead now and restart it here. And now it should work basically. Do you feel lower back pain? Yes. And then it's just going through the sequence and hopefully it's working and it's saying, I'm sorry, you are experiencing lower back pain. I'm here to help. Could you please describe in more detail? And then it's now working and it's now connected. And it already jumped here to the other part of the sequence. This gave me here the answer. As you see, how does that work? It works very easy. So I have to define here, this is the question answer. So I ask here and the variable. So the user will basically put in the yes here and it will be stored in this variable. And then actually the bot gets submitted. So we submit this variable or this answer to OpenAI and it comes back with the reply here. And the bot takes the reply and gives us a reply to this answer. So the reply from the bot is this, and it will be here. And because it said yes, the user said yes, we are also jumping into the group number three here. So let's restart it and say no, and then we should start to jump into this group two up here. I say no. Thanks for letting me know. The answer is no. You see? It, it jumped here. So this is a very easy way actually to build a quite advanced bot where you have a regular chat flow. You can define the questions here. Of course, you can just edit here and edit the question here. In this case, if I click on it, you will see that the variable safe answer in variable, it's telling me here and I can define all the variables. Of course, it's very easy to do this. Open AI model is just located here. You can pull it out, pull it in here and configure it. So that's very easy to do. Another thing that you can do very easy is basically you can go ahead and also connect webhooks. The easiest way, of course, is to use Zapier or make.com where you can actually, without any programming knowledge, connect all the tools. So you could connect to Google Sheets, you could connect to your email provider. What you could do is you could use the webhook and integrate it to your business application, wherever you have an API key, wherever there is a webhook working, you can use this to integrate your bot into that. This is just for testing. If I click on play here, if I click on play on the top, it starts the whole flow. If you just want to test the sections, you just click here. If you want to publish it, you go on share. You can copy this link and share the link with somebody. You can get it embedded in WordPress, Shopify, Wix, Google Tag Manager, HTML, and API. And, and you see it's, it's a lot of integrations. And most of the time you will just need here the URL to integrate, and then sometimes you need the verification, so the authentication to integrate it in something else. So if I click here on the JavaScript HTML, is even a standard integration, which is in the website, then there's a pop-up, and then there's a chat bubble. So this is very easy to integrate. And you see here, if you know a little about programming, you can also very easily change the color here background color, the button color, and so on. And it's easily modifiable. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions about TypeBot, let me know in the comment section, and I'm happy to help.
In the next video, we will go and look at flow wise and voice flow. So probably first at voice flow. Voice flow is a more advanced building platform where you can actually also deploy very easily to Alexa and you have speech integrated. So if you want to speak to your bot, voice flow is probably the better solution. And I also in the next step connected to Flowwise to have special documents uploaded, integrated. And this is also at the moment a little disadvantage in the TypeBot that you cannot really easily integrate your own documents into the knowledge of the bot. You would have to do a fine tuning of the model or you have to connect to a vector database or some retrieval text document retrieval system to pull out or get vectorized information fast into the bot. I see you in the next video. I hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs up. See you. Bye bye.